This morning, the scripture lesson is coming from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. This is Jesus saying, He said, A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that is coming to me. And so he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey to a distant country. And there he squandered his estate in wild living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began doing without. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields of to fig, uh, feed uh, pigs. And he longed to have his fill of the uh, carob pods that the pigs were eating, and no one was giving him anything. But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired laborers have more than enough bread, but I am dying here from hunger? I'll set out and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired laborers. So he set out and came to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and slaughter it, and let's eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing, and he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he became angry and was not willing to go in, and his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, for so many years I have been serving you, and I have never neglected a command of yours, and yet you never gave me a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you have always been with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning's sermon would have been a great Father's Day sermon. But uh, this year, I missed that opportunity with this something else on Father's Day. So here we go, folks. I'm doing that sermon this morning. I pray that all of us will learn about the heart of the Father, especially the heart of our Heavenly Father. Now, in order for us to understand and even the have of the heart of God, we need to carefully examine today's text, which I just read to you, Luke chapter 15. It is known as the parable of the lost son, or rather the story of prodigal son. You heard of that expression before. Although most of us are familiar with the parable, I still believe it is good to hear the story one more time. So please bear with me as I share the story in my own words. There was a father who had two sons. The prodigal one was the younger son of the two. He loved his father, yet he also loved his life. He wanted to have fun with friends. He yearned for an independent life. His home life and his hometown, they were okay, yet 
too small for this young man. He wanted to go out into the world in search of fun and adventure. So one day, he decided to put his heart's desire into action. He asked his father to divide up the property and to give his share of inheritance. How would you feel if you're one of the children asking that? Actually, in my humble opinion, it was very rude of the son to ask that way, demanding the inheritance money in advance before the father passed away. Well, the father didn't seem to mind, so showing no dis disapproval, the father gave the rightful share to his younger son. Not many days passed when the younger son gathered everything he had and left home for a faraway place as far as he could go away. Reminds me, uh, our children, when they go to college, where do they want to go? As far as... <laughs> They could go from home, right? Anyway, he was no exception. So he went there and squandered all the money by living a reckless life there. That means drinking and partying with prostitutes. Well, as you guessed, soon his money ran out, and to make things worse, a famine struck the region, and everybody scrambled for food, and he was no exception. As a matter of fact, he had no choice but to look for work and finally landed a job as a pig farmhand. The famine was so severe in the land that the wages he earned were not enough to fill his own stomach. So hungry, this young man would not mind eating the pig's food, that is, pods. Yet even with that, no one gave to him. At last, he hit rock bottom and came to his senses, and he had three strikes against him. That was being away from home, starving, and tending pigs. Let me mind you, it is the worst job any Jew could have. You know that Jewish folks don't eat you know, just any pig product? So tending pigs all the time, 24-7, worst job ever. Anyway, this young man remembered that his life at home was far better than the one he was having. He missed the abundance in his father's house, where even the servants, hired hands, had food to spare. Yet he was alone in a foreign country, starving to death, and no one would care. So he decided to return home, acknowledging his sins against heaven and his father, and he was coming home. That reminds me of a song entitled, Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree. How many of you remember that song? We all lived in 1970s, right? This song sold three million records in three weeks. Very popular. Even I was in Korea, I remember listening to this song. The lyrics go like this, I'm coming home. I've done my time, and now I've got to know what is and is not mine. If you received my letter telling you I'd soon be free, then you'll know just what to do. If you still want me, if you still want me. Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. It's been three long years. Do you still want me? If I don't see a ribbon round the old oak tree, I'll stay on the bus and forget about us and put the blame on me if I don't see a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. Bus driver, please look for me because I could not bear to see what I might see. I'm really still in prison and my love, she holds the key. A simple yellow ribbon's what I need to set me free. I wrote and told her please. I'll stay on the bus, forget about us, put the blame on me if I don't see a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. Now the whole bus is cheering, and I cannot believe what I see. A hundred yellow ribbons around the old oak tree. I'm coming home. Whoever wrote these words, beautiful, well done. So back to today's story, this uh, young man is on his way home. And one day the father looked outside and saw a ragged man walking toward the house when he realized that it was his own 
prodigal son, the father was filled with compassion. You see, the literal translation uh, of this word compassion means the father's guts were moved. It's not the same as you're thinking of bowel movements you had this morning. But in Jesus' time, they believed that the, the seat of the innermost emotions, such as compassion and love, located in your guts. All right? So his guts moved, and he dashed toward this young man and embraced and kissed him. Now, up until that time, the younger son rehearsed in his heart many a time on his way back home. This is what I'm going to say to my father. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I do not deserve to be your son. Consider me as one of your hired hands. When he met his father, however, he was only able to say the first two sentences. Father, I have sinned against you, and I do not deserve to be your son. Before he finished the last sentence, consider me as one of your hired hands. The father embraced him, kissed him, and stopped him from talking. And he ordered, the father ordered his servants, slaves, to bring the best robe for the son, also put a ring on the son's finger, and gave new sandals to wear. All these things, robe, ring, and sandals, signifying that the son was fully restored to the original status in the family. He is an heir again. The father welcomed the prodigal son back to the family. Of course, it was more than the son deserved. It was far more than the son ever imagined. Well, father didn't stop there. He wanted to welcome the son with a full fledged party, so he ordered the fattened calf to be killed and started the celebration with music and dancing. While the party was going on, the older son, don't you love the second part? He showed up. He was in the field working. Soon he too was coming home and he began to hear the sound of music and dance coming out of the house. When he asked one of the servants, what's going on? He was told that his younger brother returned and the father was throwing a party for him. The older brother was furious. He was so angry with his father's action that he refused to come into the house. So much so that the father ended up going out from the house to his son and asked why he was not coming in. The elder son replied, even though I slaved myself. Folks, this is not just my word. That's a Greek, you know, a literal translation of the original Greek. I slaved myself, okay, to serve you in all these years. And even though I did everything you asked me to do, you never gave me an, even a small goat to celebrate with my friends. Yet, for this son of yours, do you see the accusatory tone here? Son of yours, right? <laughs> who squandered all your money with prostitutes, you slaughtered a calf? It's not fair. All these capitals with exclamation points, it's not fair. The father consoled his son saying, look, my son, you're always with me and all I have is yours. However, we must celebrate and rejoice your brother's return because he was dead and now alive. He was lost, but now he is found. Remember the amazing grace? Once I was lost, but now I am found. The author of this lyrics copied from what Jesus said. Once was lost, but now found. Let's think about the problem of the elder son. Was that he failed to understand the heart of the father. The father was not interested in who's right and who's wrong. He's not interested in fairness. He was not justifying what his younger son did either. Neither did, neither was he going to remind his younger son how immoral he had been. However, one thing the father would never do was to say to his son, you are not welcome here. He was a father after all. 
and his son just returned. In fact, he was so glad that his lost son, his dead son, came back home alive in one piece, as we say. And that's what the father wanted to celebrate, the return of the prodigal son, not what he had done. That was the father's heart. That is the father's heart in heaven, in God's kingdom. The father welcomes the repentant sinner back home. In fact, that's the heart of the story too, folks. In the story, we see the heart of God toward sinners demonstrated as follows. Long-suffering, compassionate, gracious, running toward the totally undeserving child of God, embracing and kissing and restoring the prodigal to be an heir again, and welcoming the sinner with a generous and heartfelt celebration. I believe that's when one sinner repents and coming back to God's house and God's family, that celebration in heaven happens, full-fledged. God's heart always overflows with grace to offer such favor that no sinner deserves. So we must not forget such a heart of God is also the heart of evangelism. The sole purpose of sharing the good news is to invite those who have sinned against God back to God's family. Every evangelistic effort compassionately embraces those who come back to God's household by their own volition, meaning their own will, after years of life away from God. So as for closing, I will say this. Each year, our church has about 10 to 12 visitors, almost like one person a month. We didn't invite them. Sorry to admit that. But they just walked in because they want to come back home to God and his church. So here's my question for all of us. How do we welcome them? With what kind of heart do we welcome them to God's flock? Is our heart so full of joy that we want to run toward them like the Father did? Is our heart ready to embrace and welcome them with a celebration of music and dance? Or do we rather remain aloof like the oldest son, showing no enthusiasm whatsoever? I pray that all of us receive our visitors with a heartfelt welcome. So here's my prayer. May God help us to understand the heart of God. Therefore, practice a radical hospitality for all who come back to the Lord. So next time at church, when you see someone new to you or to us, say hello with a smile. Take the initiative. Don't wait until they come to you and show genuine interest in them. And let's welcome them with gusto. Let's bow as in prayer.